Tash, I was going to ask you a question. It's almost like you joined on cue. Um, you're, um, I know you're looking to expand your business out from Poland into Portugal. Um, and um, from a sort of talent point of view, um, have you got any sort of specific questions? I know that's kind of a bit more specific around Portugal, but I'm just quick curious if you've got any questions specifically around acquiring talent in a new country such as Portugal as you expand. Yeah, I think um, I think the last time I was in a room and Becky was here, she gave me some really good advice about, you know, you have to do your research. I think what um, the struggle that we have is the time that it takes to do that research and not having the resources, not knowing locally, like, where's the best job board to post your role? Um, what, what forums do people use? Is it do people look for jobs on Facebook because people do now like I think um knowing where and knowing um what the best the best place is to advertise um knowing what the local standards are with in regards to uh benefits are I think but from a recruitment standpoint definitely um you know where where are we advertising um locally uh, Natasha, if you if you don't, I can jump in on that actually. So we we did an exercise that's been really fruitful actually with quite a few of the companies that we work with. Uh, they're on the agency side, but they're trying to figure out where are the best place to go to find this talent. Where are they hanging out? What sort of content are they consuming? What social media platforms they're on? And you know, you know, if you if you work in marketing, you always produce a, a customer avatar before you start your marketing campaign. So you literally draw out a picture of the ideal customer. And based on that, you then identify all those factors and everything else. Um, what we've seen incredibly successful is in any recruitment strategy, if you start with a candidate avatar and you literally build out the the ideal perf perfect candidate, if there is such a thing, their profile, um, and you ask all those questions. So we, we actually ran some user groups across some of the companies that we work with. who went out to their existing candidate pool and said, tell me, where do you spend your time? What do you do? Where do you go? Where do you consume content? What sort of questions do you ask? There's a... There's a really interesting, a quite clever tool called answerthepublic.com. Um, I presume it covers across into the US as well. But basically, it tracks actually key terminology and phrases and expressions that people are asking on Google, um, for example, when they're under particular search topics. So let's say it's about I'm looking for Python developer jobs, as an example, in Poland. Um, it will tell me all the exact wording and terminology that people are utilizing to search for those. So and that now gives me a really clear insight into actually how people are trying to find jobs. And then I can then, uh, my strategy is then is aligned to what people are actually looking for, if that makes any sense. So um, really highly recommend building out a candidate profile, a candidate, candidate avatar. I presume you, you may well do this already, so apologies if that sounds um, patronizing, but um, it's definitely worthwhile doing. And then do a user group and basically say, just talk to me. You, you guys are all developers in Portugal right now where do you go where do you spend your time and so on and so forth and I find that a really useful starting point before you run any campaign on the back of that that's really useful James um actually I had a, a, a question James that came up from last uh losing my memory now I think it might come up with a conversation with someone a few days ago when they were asking why do we still why do why is there still a norm to use resumes <laughs> <laughs> or use CVs, as we would say here in, in England or Europe. So in terms of um, uh, what other ways or, or will there be a shift in the way people kind of enter a process at that early stage um, rather than, you know, submitting several pages of, of notes on their background? Have you got any thoughts around that? I've got a really strong opinion about it. I, I think I think the resume is dead. I'm absolutely convinced by it. So many organisations, so many business leaders that I engage with, um, we don't use CVs or resumes anymore um, at all. Um, we, there are other ways of assessing people. I think by using CV, I mean, I, I, I mean, bear in mind, I can get chat GPT to write my CV for me anyway, sort of stuff. So is it a real representation of who I am as a person? Probably not. We, in a talent short market, we absolutely hire for potential. I mean, it's critical to us. So I'd rather look for people's potential and be able to train them to be able to do the job as opposed to look for someone who's got X amount of experience or X years of history and so on and so forth. So I think a resume is dead person. I, I don't see it. So if you look at TikTok, I mean, TikTok's a classic example. TikTok are, are part of their strategy is they think that there won't be CVs or resumes in the future. You have TikToks instead is their philosophy. So, that, so LinkedIn, as LinkedIn is at the moment, which is basically a recruitment tool, uh, TikTok will also become a recruitment platform and you will search for people based on TikToks and based on certain algorithms 
determining them based on all sorts of things. You know, we're seeing it now also with there's some technology that's come out of Japan recently, which is all about how you assess someone based on their facial technology, on facial te- facial recognition technology and that type of stuff. Um, whether it's right or wrong, whether there's a, a an issue, <laughs> me too, Natasha, don't worry. Um, uh, wh- whether that's an issue when it comes to things like bias and that type of stuff is obviously the big question mark at the moment and that type of stuff. But you know, the reality is I think paper-based CV type concepts are, are, are long, long gone. Um, I think we just use them at the moment because it's an easy way to track data against data. Here's a job spec. You know, I, again, I can get, we've got people in the moment in the UK who literally, they get a job spec, they run it through chat GTP, it creates the questions for them. They put a bunch of candidates. It then tracks the who's got those skill sets, stick the two together, even then sends a message out to them afterwards saying, um, you've got the skill set, let's have a conversation. And anyway, it's very, very archaic, I think. And it means you're just significantly limiting the talent pool to someone who's got you know, A plus A. It has to be called the same thing. Whereas... Now, if you look at, I look at my business, if I look at the majority of people who work for us, um, A, I didn't recruit them on their CV and resume, and B, if I had, they probably wouldn't have got the job. Um, but they're some of my highest performing people because they've got an amazing skill set and from an attitudinal point of view, from a learning perspective, from a potential point of view. And that to me is worth its weight in gold, especially in the talent short market. My personal that's an opinion, I'm clearly very opinionated about it. No, no science behind that one, I'm afraid. I'm just very opinionated about it. 